finally, finally, we have a reversal on those really high mandates for electric vehicles to become mainstream. We have a rollback on that. Plus, we have a stunning reversal from General Motors just a week after news broke that they were selling your driving data through Lexus Nexus to insurance companies. We have that reversal happening as well. Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and this week's Truck News Recap. We'll talk about those two items, plus some more details on the Pickup Truck Talk cha- website and the YouTube channel, kind of gives you some behind the scenes. That's what I do a lot with these Truck News Recaps. Yeah, recap stuff. That's the name of the game. So I have a pull up here on Reuters.com, and it, it broke about Wednesday, and I just I wanted to put it on this week's Truck News Recap because I thought it was pretty interesting. So I'm calling it Not So Fast on Electric Vehicles. Finally, things common sense is finally setting in. And we're going to make some better decisions, hopefully. So it says U.S. eases tailpipe rules, slows EV transition through 2030. This is happening globally. People got ahead of the gun. They said, oh, it's going to be awesome with EVs tomorrow. And then the reality sets in of higher prices, no infrastructure, uh, battery replacement costs. There's a lot of issues going on with EVs that aren't being talked about enough, in my opinion. So the, the administration said as Wednesday, they slashed its target for U.S. electric vehicle adoption from 67% by 2032 to as little as 35% after industry and auto worker backlashed in the political battleground state of Michigan. Let, 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 that's too narrow. Industry, auto worker, consumer, the reality is of EVs not selling as fast as they thought they were going to. I'm sorry to my EV advocate friends who uh, cover this stuff quite a bit, but that's it's not like the best thing to slice bread here. There's some challenges to this. So the EPA instead adopted a technical, technology-neutral regulatory scheme that allows automakers far more freedom to meet emission standards with gas, electric, hybrids. We've been saying get us hybrids. Hybrid, I think I'm saying it right. You make fun of me in the comments. Saying uh, we were talking about getting hybrids for a long period of time. Plug-in hybrids. Why don't you just do more of this stuff, not just go full EV? Uh, which many environmental bundlers have opposed as a half measure to delay the EV transition. What a load of crap. Um, the agency also embraced advanced gasoline technology to save fuel, such as turbocharging, lighter vehicles, or stop-start ignition systems. I don't know what Reuters is talking about here, but those three things have been out for a long period of time. This isn't new. Uh, going all the way down, EPA Administrator Michael Regan told, I think it's Regan, told uh, reporters new roles nonetheless achieved the same greenhouse gas reductions as original EPA proposal for more, far more aggressive EV transition. Okay. Let me be clear, our final rule delivers the same, if not more, pollution reduction. We designed the standard to be technology neutral and performance-based to give automakers the flexibility to choose which combination of pollution control and technologies are best suited for the customers. Blah, blah, blah. No, he's wrong. Um, so as we go down to the bottom of this, to more of the story, that Reagan emphasized there's absolutely no mandate to adopt electric vehicles. The EPA acknowledged the rule cuts emissions by 49% by, by 2032 over 2026 levels compared to 56% under the proposal last year. So it was 56, now it's 49%, essentially the same between the proposed rule. However, when you go down and actually look at more information, the emissions rules will likely be masked, uh, what from Biden, uh, no, excuse me. The new rules, while soft and will nonetheless force dramatic emissions reductions, EPA said the plan cuts tailpipe emissions by 50% by 2026 levels Reduces greenhouse gas emissions by 7.2 billion tons through 2025. So the they're saying is the rules aren't mandates, but they're kind of giving more projections on where they want automakers to go. We want more again technologies, more flexibility to get to those reduction needs. Uh, the new regulations will be easier, but hardly easy for automakers to meet given the relatively low levels of US EV and hybrid adoption now, which is a load of bull. Because General Motors finally reversed course, and they're twice going to reverse course in this, this video. They're bringing out half-ton hybrids. Finally, bring stuff back out, like hybrids, plug-in hybrids. Like bring stuff back out. EVs last year accounted for less than eight percent of vehicle sales. Hybrids, including plug-ins, accounted for only about eight nine percent of vehicle sales because there's not that many of them. Ugh. Again, this is frustrating to me because they're not paying attention to what's going on. There's just not that many there out there. Hybrid sales have ever surged in recent months as EVs demand slowed, suggesting a new regulation could set up a hybrid boom. Now, Tesla and other environmental companies have blasted hybrids as a side road on the way to an urgently needed transition to fully electric vehicles. Well, you know what? We, we, Rome wasn't built in a day. We can't get from full gas to full EV. That's not possible. We needed to make these steps to get there, and getting customers 
from a naturally aspirated V8 to a turbocharged V6 has been hard. From a V8 to a hybrid has been hard. You know, it, it's going to take time to get people to get used to these technologies and to work through the things we have. Like, so direct injection has been a problem in this channel we've been talking about. We got to we got to get past these technology issues and make it make sense and make the prices come down. So the UAW is a fan of that they want to you know because. UAW is going to lose jobs, electric vehicles. Electric vehicles require less manufacturing, have less parts. That was a big deal. Uh, the EPA rule, though, is interesting. This is what I want to talk about. This is why a big part of this video. The EPA rules, and I'm going to scroll. Let me zoom in. Make sure you guys can see this. The EPA rule goes easier. Detroit 3 is highly profitable, heavy-duty pickup truck franchises than on passenger cars or ladder trucks. Okay? By 2032, vehicles such as the Ford Super Duties pickups, which is, we're talking heavy duties here, would be required to cut CO2 emissions by 46%. So but we are targeting heavy-duty trucks. This has been a change in the last, I'm going to say, six years. Uh, we've been starting to look at heavy-duty trucks as part of the cutting emissions. But they will still be allowed to emit more than three times as much CO2 than a light-duty pickup, such as a F-150 or Silverado 1500, and nearly four times as much as a CO2 as a passenger car. And the reason for that is these are work trucks. They're designed to do a job that's different. And so they have let, they have different rules for them. Once you get above 8,500 pounds, GVWR, your different rules for these. Uh, automakers said they, they changed. The ch final rules have made a big difference. Okay, speaking of reversals and more news from General Motors, let's go over here my friends, gm-trucks.com, my friend J Josh and Zane Merva. They talked about in a stunning reversal, GM stops sharing vehicle data with brokers. Remember the story, GM was getting... Uh, data from an app. It was called OnStar Smart Driver. Whether you opted in or not, it was collecting data and, send, and selling it. So they have decided to stop sharing vehicle data, which is a huge news. We talked about this on the channel last week. We talked about it in different live streams and things. And so it's nice to see this. Listen to us. Make a change. I don't want to share my data with my insurance company, my driving data. I don't want them to judge me based on my driving to change my rate. And I... I I didn't want that. There are people that did want that because they were like, hey, if I'm driving really well and somebody else is not, I'm not paying for that dumbass. But I think overall, as a privacy measure, it makes sense not to share. Big news. So back on, it's also big news because I want to go to pickuptrucktalk.com and I want to scroll down for a minute because there was a lawsuit filed over this as well. People have been talking to lawyers and things, but this guy had a lawsuit filed over data collection. He got turned down by for insurance based on the data being sent to LexisNexis. And different people like Josh and Merva over there, they have requested their driving data from LexisNexis to see what's in those reports actually. So interesting stuff going on there. I don't think it's the final say is done with that. There may be some lawsuits going on, maybe a class action lawsuit going on, but it's nice to see GM has reversed course. What's also new on the website, the Jeep Wrangler 392 reached the end of the road. Uh, yeah, the Hemi's dead. The 6.4 liter supercharged Hemi's dead. It's de dead in cars. It's dead in SUVs, and it's gonna be dead in trucks. So that's that. I guess yeah. Uh, there's also a small electric truck on sale by 2026. That's what Ford's working on. It was part of a um, investment talk he was giving, and uh, people were listening to the transcript. And Jill read through the transcript and wrote a story up about that because there's a BYD Seagull. And we're going to talk more about this BYD sequel. I don't know. If, I didn't get a chance to follow up and see if she got a, a photo of this thing. Yes, it's right there. This is a $13,000, 10 to $13,000 EV that goes 250 miles. This has got GM scared. It's got Ford scared. It's got Tesla scared for sure. And it's got a lot of people really upset with China because China is actually bankrolling this company and allowing them to sell this at a lower rate and absorb the losses. And this could be coming to the United States. You're talking about building a plant in Mexico. And this is the big fear factor out there in the modern market is the BYD, this one right here. So keep an eye out for this guy. It's cheap, runs on electricity. Uh, again, fuel costs be less, maintenance costs be less. And, you know, if you're uh, somebody that can't afford much of a vehicle price, this is could be a big deal for you. So looking back on the website, what else is new? Uh, we have Ford Ranger Raptor and Ranger First Drive. I put that information out there for you guys. They're also videos as well. I broke, I kind of broke the news on the 2025 Ram 1500. Uh, Stell Power actually had the story and I, we, Jill and I went and looked at their story and wrote up ours and their numbers were actually wrong. And so I think our numbers are accurate looking at the data that we saw on the fuel efficiency or fuel economy.gov information that her and I both double checked. And so those are the numbers. And I think it's interesting. It's created a lot of debate online whether the high output Hurricane engine 
should be compared to the outgoing Hemi engine in 1500 and why it's not being compared to the 6.4 liter supercharged engine because they feel like that should be the way it is. I've heard that confusion from people and I strongly disagree. Um, I disagree because the 6.4 liter supercharged engine was in the TRX. And so you could say, well, hey, there's no apples apples comparison, but you have to compare it to something. And now they're doing this top tier engine and this top tier trim, it's a 1500. I'm sorry, but I'm going to compare it. And the fact it gets worse fuel economy than the outgoing Hemi, even though it's got all this more power and it requires premium fuel or A9 octane, I think it's important for customers to understand that. So when you're buying that tungsten, that $90,000, $100,000 truck, you know what you're getting into. I have my big price difference, the video I put out for the Ram 1500 Bighorn versus Laramie. We talked a lot. I did a, a build and price on that because a lot of conversation about why I bought a Bighorn and why not buy the Laramie. Uh, there's Hyundai Digital Key. This is a really interesting story Jill's got on the website. Uh, the Hyundai Digital Key is free. Free, 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 as she says in the story. Um, we've seen this time and time again where subscription-based services are getting monthly service charges like OnStar from General Motors. We're seeing the app from like Toyota's Connected Services app. We have to pay for remote start. This is the first time we've seen an automaker actually say, no, it's free. I'm not gonna, we're not gonna argue about this. So you can check the app, you can you can log it, you can walk up to your, your Hyundai and get in by not having the key in your pocket. You know, there's a lot of things that people like as far as, and Jill points out as a runner, she doesn't wanna carry a key fob and this and that. She just wants to carry something simple. And she actually put the digital key on her watch and she actually walked up to the vehicle and tap her watch on the door handle and hop in, which is pretty nice. If you think about a running situation or if you're out canoeing somewhere, out fishing, you don't want to carry your keys on you. You know, you can just use your watch to, to get in your vehicle. I kind of like that. Um, and so the also new is the 2025 Nis Nissan Kicks. This is interesting. Uh, look at this thing. So this was unveiled today in New York International. Or, yeah, unveiled today in New York. And it's part of the auto show next week. That's why I kind of messed up my head. But yeah, this is the new Nissan Kicks. New powertrain, new exterior, new interior, new technology. You want to check the story out if you're looking for an inexpensive subcompact SUV. Nissan Kicks is, uh, I don't know, <laughs> it's, it's got the look to it. Now, what's going on on PickupTruckTalk.com, or PickupTruckTalk.com? What's going on on the YouTube channel? I'm all in place today. Okay, so now over here on the YouTube channel, what happened this week? We have a couple things happened. And so we have used truck prices finally dropped. I have a story that actually did pretty well for us for the website. This is from an iccars.com. They did a study. I also have the, I, I finally put out my Ram Rebel uh, video sitting on this for about a month. I apologize for the people waiting for me. The forum people were asking me for it. I just didn't quite get it done. And so I show you what's new on this. I talked to you about how much expensive it is. And uh, wow, it's expensive. So, and I don't know why I scrolled down a little bit, little bit there, but uh, I did put out a video on the Ford Ranger as well. And this is just basically the walk around I got from the event. And people have been kind of digging on that because it's just raw footage. It's, it's, I was there. They're talking. Here's what happened. Uh, and then we talked about the ne nearly $9,000 for the Ram Lim Limited Longhorn. A viewer had asked me, what's with the Longhorn? What's the packages? That kind of deal. And so I put that out as well. I had the Ford Ranger XLT. Don't overlook this one. I know people are, are kind of uh, overlooking the Ranger because it's just the Ranger refresh, whatever. But there's a lot more goodness to this. I also did a towing video separately on the Ford Ranger. I felt like towing and overall walk around, I wanted to keep them separate because I didn't want to overload you guys, the audience, by doing a 35, 40 minute video. That worked out pretty good. Different people's interest. Uh, Jill has her Hyundai Santa Fe that she did the review on, and uh, lots of interesting details, including the grab handle to get on top of the roof. So it's an interesting thing. I, I don't know. It's kind of a controversial feature. Uh, we have the hurricane you know, economy numbers like I talked about on the website, and then the Ranger Raptor video that went live on the YouTube channel as well as the website. If you want to see us jump, us driving around, us uh, having a blast, check out that video. So there you go. There's the truck news recap for this week on the details of what's new out there in the marketplace, what I are new in the news cycle, and how I saw the stuff behind the scenes. For more, check out the forum, check out the website, check out things going on, lots of stuff going on on this channel. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.